Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, February 10th meeting of the Town of Yonville Zoning Design and Review Board. So first we'll have a call to order. Oh, sorry, that's me. Sorry, there's a crowd here, so I'm completely <laughs> overwhelmed, just so we're clear on this. Sorry. First, I'll start with uh, the town manager who would like to make an introduction this evening. Okay. Then we'll have the roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Chair Durham. And actually, it's always a great pleasure to be here, even more so when we do have a crowd, because every once in a while, it's really important that the public participate in our processes. And I think tonight gives us a great example of, of how we listen and participate. But tonight, it's a distinct pleasure to make two formal introductions to the Zoning Design Review Board. First, uh, our not-so-new Public Works Director, Joe Tagliabashi. Uh, you will occasionally see him as necessary. Uh, tonight represents one of those where we have a multidisciplined item before you with the presentation of the draft circulation element. And I'd also like to introduce Marlene Demery, who is serving as the Interim Planning Director as we have Sandra Lista out on maternity leave. So um, Marlene will be working with us for four to five months. So with that, um, we look forward to a productive meeting, and I just wanted to make those introductions. Thank you very much. So with that, we'll move to Nathan in the roll call. Great. Chair Durham? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Scoggins? Here. Member Laz? Here. Member Cook? Here. Let the record show that Member Janes is excused. Very good, and we'll all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And do any of the members have any uh, changes or any concerns about tonight's <coughs> agenda? No. no. I'll Very move good. to adopt. Very good. And a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. And the approval of the minutes from December 9th, from December 9th, 2014. Uh, Commissioner McCook, you and I, <laughs> were there that evening. Do you have any changes or concerns? No, I don't. So good. I'll make a motion to accept. Excellent. And I will second. And we shall be unanimous on that. And then we shall move into any public comments from anybody in the uh, audience for the two items not on the agenda tonight very good then we will move on to the consent calendar which there are none so that'll move us straight into the public hearing uh, to start with the town general plan circulation element thank you well thank you and um, it's a great pleasure to be here to substitute hopefully Admiral leave with uh, Sandra while she's off on maternity leave. I hope I don't make too many mistakes. But everybody's been really helpful and it's been great for the first week. Um, so I'm just going to introduce the item and um, we have both the consultant who prepared the, the circulation element here as well as, as Nathan uh, to make a presentation. But I, I wanted to frame mostly for the public's um, benefit and then as well as for the board's um, what, what the, why you're seeing the, the circulation element. Um, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, it's a policy level document that uh, really incorporates both planning items as well as public works because what, what this is a, a, an element of the general plan which means they need to complement and support each other. And so the design board being mostly involved with planning, the circulation element is kind of an integral part of, of the review that you do on other projects. And so it's before you tonight because we would like to make sure that there's a lot of uh, input to the council on this because it's a very important part of the general plan. Um, that being said, um, it also serves as a policy level document for the, the town council. So um, the, the consultant is going to talk about some concrete and not so concrete recommendations this evening as part of uh, his presentation. And I also wanted to make sure that the public was aware that none of these recommendations are things that are going to be put in motion as a result of the adoption of the circulation element. It's simply a kind of a policy level document. So uh, no capital improvements are, are uh, put together as a result of that. There's always additional studies that, that um, are undertaken before any 
of these concepts are implemented. And so I know that some of you are here specifically about some sidewalks in the Washington Park area, and that's really not um, anything that's being adopted tonight. There's going to be a lot of public discussion about that issue. And there's also some other circulation issues that are included in the uh, plan. So this doesn't adopt an overpass being put somewhere or sidewalk changes being made. It's simply kind of an overview and an over policy level discussion of things that the consultant thinks maybe we need to beef up in our plan. But um, not only the town of Yount, but, but, but most towns and counties really encourage uh, participation at that level where, uh, where it's appropriate to talk about what is the sidewalk going to look like, how's the parking going to be put together. So uh, while some of the things that he's going to be talking about are very specific, like we're missing sidewalk in these four links, or there, uh, we should look at some cross, additional crosswalks near the school. Those things are pretty concrete, but a lot of the concepts in the circulation element are, are, are just things that we need to do more study on and outreach to the community on. So I've done a number of these general plans, and, and it is really um, important for everybody to understand that n nothing's being decided at this, at this level. So, Great. Nathan? Yeah, just to give a little background, <clears throat> um, before you tonight is a draft of the town general plan circulation element. Um, the current element that we have within the town was previously adopted from the 90s and um, needs a little bit of updating. Um, in addition to it being outdated, we are also um, required to do this in order to comply with the California Complete Streets Act of 2008. Um, the town requests a number of funding options from the One Bay Area Grant Program. Um, it helps fund some of the capital projects that occur in the town, and uh, they have required that each municipality um, update its circulation element and its housing element in order to comply with new state laws. Uh, earlier in previous year, we adopted our housing element, um, and now we have the circulation element before you. So uh, the town has been working with <coughs> WTRANS, who is a firm that specializes in traffic and circulation plans. And after doing a series of studies, which <coughs> our consultant will share with us this evening, um, they were able to draft us this element that is now before you. Um, and so our recommendation uh, to the board now is to receive the staff report, ask us any questions, re listen to a, a presentation from our consultant about um, this plan, the circulation element in general, and then um, offer recommendations to staff for us to then bring to council before adoption. Um, so with that said. Thank you, Nathan. Are there any questions of staff thus far? Commissioner Cook? Um, just one. On Page two, there's a list of policies and recommendations. Those are the things you want us specifically to speak to? Um, all of these will go into more detail um, in the presentation that okay. our consultant has brought. Um, if after the presentation there are still questions that can be answered, I think they can be asked at that time. Okay. Any questions of staff, Commissioner Les? Uh -huh. <coughs> Commissioner uh, no, Scoggins? Thank you. With that being said, we'll bring up the uh, consultant. Thanks. Uh, good evening. Steve Weinberger. I'm a principal with uh, WTRANS. Uh, we're located in Santa Rosa. Um, happy to be here tonight to give you an overview of the issues that we addressed as part of your circulation element update. Um, and just to add to uh, Ms. Demery's um, discussion, um, I sort of look at it as we, we evaluated a lot of um, uh, conditions, data uh, in your town, sort of an assessment of where you're at in terms of vehicle traffic, bike traffic, ped traffic, transit, and, and basically identified areas where the town should turn its attention to over the next several years as you, they continue to uh, address uh, traffic circulation uh, around the streets and roads around the town. Um, there's been, uh, we've identified a number of uh, really nice improvements for uh, pedestrians around town over the last that I've seen over the last five years. I've been in the area for 20 years, so um, we we noted those, and then also noted sort of areas that that might need to be addressed. So um, with that, um, there's a, a series of maps in the circulation element of your town, and 
uh, which we use to present information. Um, this shows you the areas that we focused on, um, existing roadway facilities uh, around town, uh, what are the current uh, vehicular traffic volumes on those, and, and how do the, the most key intersections operate in terms of delay and what's called level of service. Uh, we looked at your public transit, um, uh, both uh, uh, transit bus facilities as well as, well as your uh, transit stops, uh, bike and pedestrian facilities, uh, your crosswalks, um, the, uh, where your uh, uh, existing bike trails uh, are located, sort of traffic safety issues. Um, we uh, actually obtained sort of statewide uh, uh, accident history. Um, all cities and towns, collect, the police departments collect um, uh, accident history, it goes into a central database in the state. We actually get that information, so we evaluated it for uh, locations and sort of town-wide um, to see if there was any red flags. Um, as Nathan indicated, uh, complete streets is sort of a term that's used now. There's a complete streets act in California that all um, uh, jurisdictions must um, have a circulation element that addresses complete streets and what that is is make make sure your streets are accommodating all modes of transportation not just vehicles but pedestrians bicycles <laughs> transit users um, all activity that can happen on the street town should plan for that uh, and then finally we looked at um, parking facilities and utilization of that parking uh, during peak parking times um, in terms of the data collection, we did look at some demographics. Uh, we had some traffic uh, volume counts done. As I said, we looked at the accident history. Uh, we did do some speed surveys at some key locations, and I'll kind of show you those. Um, we looked at the uh, data from the uh, transit providers in terms of their ridership, and, and again, that parking occupancy. Um, just some uh, quick snippets of some, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of data um, tonight, and I'm also not going to read a lot of policy statements for you. I'm just going to hopefully give you some highlights, maybe it'll jog some questions for you. But this is the um, uh, traffic volume, we had traffic volume counts down to three locations, what we uh, estimate to be the, the higher volume locations in town. Uh, and this is essentially four days in, in September uh, on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The top group of <coughs> numbers, and, that, and of course going across, that's time of day over four days. Uh, going up is the hour, <coughs> hourly traffic volumes. And the, the top group of numbers is uh, uh, Washington, North California Drive, which is your, essentially your highest volume location in town. And then, and these are all scaled the same, so you get an idea of relative sort of volume changes. Uh, Washington, the middle one is Washington, south of Madison, and the lower one is Yount Street, just east of Washington, so near us here. Um, and you'll see relatively that the, that upper one is the highest volume. And frankly, what's um, we we look at a lot of sort of daily traffic profiles in a lot of communities. And what's peculiar about yours is. It's, it's relatively flat from morning till evening. You see, um, you see a, a, a AM peak and a PM peak with uh, down in the middle. So you have a lot of daytime activity, and that's probably no surprise. And the other thing is your, your weekend traffic equals your weekday traffic. Uh, if I were showing you something, say, in Santa Rosa, you would see the Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday and then Sunday would be the lowest. But And I think that's no surprise either. So just interesting information about traffic in your town. What, what goes on is as important on Saturday with traffic as it is during the weekday. Um, probably can't read these numbers, but I'll, I'll point out to you the, the key information and <coughs> give me just a second to grab one. Excuse me? You can ah. use the mouse yeah. Excellent. Okay. So th this just shows you the, the speed surveys that we had done, and we did them. Uh, there's, there's standards of how speed surveys should be done. And frankly, 
the majority of uh, and every little dot you see there with a the number in it, th those were locations we did speed surveys. We tried to do them away from stop signs so it wasn't influencing speeds. In general, um, almost all the speeds that we measured all over town were, were around 25 miles an hour, give or take a mile or two. So nothing, <laughs> no red flags from our end. The one location that jumped out was um, Yanfel Crossroad. This location, the what we call the 85th percentile speed, which is the speed that you generally set speed limits. So that's the speed at which 85% of the traffic is traveling that that speed or under. And the 85th percentile on Yanfel Crossroad was um, 39 miles an hour. So that was probably the one location we um, identified that maybe needs some attention <coughs> in terms of bringing speeds down. Um, transit service, again, we looked at uh, the transit routes and the location of the bus stops and kind of noted that there's a, uh, you know, uh, ex probably excess stops. Um, not a huge critical issue, but just something we noted. Uh, we looked at the uh, your your bike plan, and this is from the county's bike plan, and that's where your uh, bike plan is contained in terms of what facilities have been built, which ones are still uh, coming and planned for. Um, we looked at pedestrian facilities. Um, where are there gaps in sidewalks? And we, we understand that the... Uh, um, the Old Town area does not have sidewalks, which is why it's shown in yellow, but outside of Old Town, where are there are gaps in sidewalks? And we also looked at uh, crosswalks. We, we basically did an assessment of every crosswalk you have, and, and, and most are all very well marked, um, better than a lot of communities. Um, so you're doing uh, good there. Um, this is a diagram of the parking occupancy, and we have a couple figures in the document and a, t uh, a table of data. Um, we basically did surveys in uh, all these pods that you see of how many parking spaces both on and off street there are, and, and then how many cars were parked there. And we looked at sort of a Thursday evening, uh, evening uh, period and then we also uh, when we would expect to have the most uh, the peak parking of the day and then we also looked at a weekend midday condition so this is actually the higher number of cars parked was in the weekend and <clears throat> the dark the darkest red uh, were uh, areas that had more than 80 or 90 percent of the total spaces occupied um, and then the yellows were uh, up to 60, uh, and then the, the greens were about up to 50, and then the blues you see here were less than 50% occupied. So in all these areas we uh, surveyed in total, there's about 1,590 uh, parking spaces townwide. So, um, and overall, the overall occupancy townwide yeah, the the peak that we noted was on that weekend condition, about 63% occupied. So about two thirds of your spaces, both total on and off street, um, are um, about two thirds occupied. You actually have um, a, a bit more cars parked in off street lots compared to on street. Um, so, you know, we we noted that you have high occupancy where I think you probably think you have it. Um, so that's no surprise. Um, but I think maybe the message takeaway is, I mean, you do have um, an adequate parking su supply townwide. Um, I think it's just a matter of providing information uh, to tourists who aren't familiar with the parking spaces where they can, can where they can park and where the, the spaces are. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, those each of those sort of issues I told you we focused on. I'm going to go one by one, and I'm just going to kind of give you those highlight areas that we've noted <coughs> that there are issues that we sh that we think the the town should focus on over the next several years uh, as they start to um, identify uh, policies and progr programs and, and capital improvements and where they. Uh, you might turn your attention. Um, so we did uh, note the, the Yount's uh, Humboldt Street intersection uh, is essentially what we call an unbalanced stop sign, uh, stop controlled intersection. Generally, you see intersections that have stop controls 
all, all the way around or in one direction. But in this case, you have a uh, stop sign on Yount southbound, but you don't northbound. And Fennell down here we know is an always stop as well. And just and then generally you want to avoid that because dri drivers don't expect that. Uh, um, if somebody coming on the side street sees one car stopping here, they generally expect the other. So it's it's a safety issue. So we've we've suggested that the town sort of evaluate this intersection, look at and an, uh, pedestrian patterns because pedestrian safety is also a consideration here. And that this intersection <coughs> probably revisit and determine whether you should go to always stops or remove the stop signs, to, but just generally go to a more standard approach in terms of traffic control. Um, as I mentioned, Yountville Crossroad was identified uh, as uh, uh, higher speeds, and we suggested uh, um, and we included a policy that uh, suggests that the, the town sort of look at road treatments there, such as maybe uh, a lane narrowing uh, or even some speed tables mm -hmm. just to bring speeds down as they enter town from Yountville Crossroad because you do have quite a high uh, speed there uh, relatively to the other locations. Um, we looked at local street connectivity um, and we did note that there are several neighborhoods south of Fennell that have limited access and only access to Washington and not uh, from one neighborhood to the next. Um, and we suggested that, uh, and there are policy that uh, the town should consider looking at the circulation issue sort of at the Heather Heritage Court area, um, at, least, at least in terms of pedestrian and emergency <coughs> vehicle access. Uh, a lot of cases you have an opportunity to make sure you have connections for pedestrians and, and bikes and emergency vehicles um, at a minimum. So you have that um, opportunity there. Um, in terms of operating standards, um, generally most communities are uh, spend a lot of time looking at intersection level of service. Uh, and every community has a standard in terms of uh, how their intersections should operate from <coughs> the level of service, A being the best and F being the worst. Um, and, uh, and we actually calculated the level of service of your, what are your three high, highest volume intersections at um, Washington and Madison, Washington and Yount, and uh, Washington and California. And frankly, all three were operating during the worst traffic conditions at a level of service B. Um, so just A being the best, so B is the next. Um, that's great. You don't have any traffic congestion issues from, from our um, look at it. And um, there's there's also a movement in California with uh, CEQA law that, that results in EIRs um, that actually level service for traffic analysis in EIRs is actually going away, and it probably will go away within the next year. Um, there's a there was a Senate bill, and it's now adopted, and the the state is actually. Um, making recommendations for other methods to measure traffic impacts. Um, and and our, our recommendations and, and the way we've set up the policy is um, you do have a level of service standard now. Stay with it. You're meeting your standard, frankly, uh, based on our evaluation of your housing element and the, and the number of additional units that are going to come in and some uh, other anticipated projects. You're not going to uh, change the level of service you're at. So we actually suggested there that the, the town, when the state um, in the, through the CEQA law drops level of service, that the town also maybe drop it in terms of a standard um, in town because uh, in my mind I don't think you're ever going to ex exceed um, level of service C. I think you're in good shape in terms of traffic congestion. Um, okay, in terms of bicycle facilities, uh, one of the, um, the bike uh, areas that we thought could use some enhancements in terms of uh, bike safety and bike demarcation was uh, the transition from Yountville Crossroad uh, to Madison and Yount Street, where it, it, it makes uh, the bike lane sort of make the turn. Um, 
there's just there's a lot of new uh, bike marking uh, standards out there that have come in in the last two to three years. Green, you uh, go to other communities, you might see green bike lanes. Um, just the way bike lanes are striped with some green paint in conflict areas. I think there's some opportunities here to really sort of enhance this change, especially as bike bicyclists come into town and are making these turns. Um, you you want to make sure that. Uh, they're in the right place and the driver knows that they're there so this was an area that we thought would be a good sort of bike enhancement project uh, in town you do have the bike lanes already um, but they, they could be enhanced with the the new uh, bike demarcation standards um, we also noted that you you do have the bike lanes on um, Yount Street, and as you go south from Madison, they they essentially stop at this point um, at the Hopper Creek path, and so you will you do have bicyclists maybe traveling on on Yount Street that um, uh, are then the bike lanes go away. So we suggested some additional uh, bike markings. Uh, to assist the cyclists as they travel south on Yount. Uh, we looked at the Hopper Creek path, uh, where there are existing sections uh, of the path, and there's policy that, um, th that suggests that the town complete the path system as much as possible and where possible uh, widen, widen the path. Um, there's issue, uh, it's probably only wide enough for pedestrians in those <coughs> areas. If you wanted to serve cyclists, it would need to be wider. Whether that's feasible or not, that would be evaluated as part of the assessment. <coughs> uh, we did note the next uh, three projects that are on the, the bike plan list. Um, they're actually um, mostly class, what are called class three, and those are not striped bike lanes, but sort of signed uh, bike corridor facilities that might have what are called the sharrows, which is the bike symbol with the two arrows that are more there for informational for drivers to look out for cyclists and they're generally put where you don't have room for bike lanes. Um, so the, uh, the policy uh, provides priority in terms of the next bike facilities. In terms of pedestrian safety and connectivity, um, we did note your, your bicycle, I'm sorry, your sidewalk widths are generally four to five feet um, through, um, through most of the, um, t on Washington. Uh, through most of the town and five to four to five feet is generally a narrow sidewalk width even for a residential street and commercial streets um, if if designed generally have wider sidewalk widths um, it becomes a trade-off though of where do you get that width from so uh, there's policy that the town should consider a, a, a sidewalk maintenance plan um, and, and looking to see are there any uh, areas on Washington where the town might widen, provide wider sidewalks to serve the commercial pedestrian traffic, and is there room for that? Because um, obviously parking may be affected, uh, but maybe there are opportunities where you have maybe a bit wider travel lane that you can borrow some width from. Um, we also looked at the sidewalk gaps and noted, uh, and there's policy that notes which uh, where there are gaps in the sidewalk that should be filled. In terms of the Washington Park subdivision, which was already mentioned, um, we did note the, um, the existing cross-section um, does uh, potentially result in conflicts with cars and pedestrians since there is no necessarily designated pedestrian way. And, and if there is, the cars are potentially parking on what maybe was intended as the pedestrian way. So our, our opinion was that the, this should be an issue that's addressed um, and through your ADA process going on now just to look at um, maybe the parking demand, where the pedestrian sidewalks might be added or may not be, or is there a way to serve both in a better way within the street width you have now. So um, no specific recommendations of what, what the answer is, but we did present a number of options that could be studied. Um, crosswalks and uncontrolled locations. As I said, a lot of your crosswalks do have good signage um, where what we call uncontrolled crosswalks. That is a crosswalk. If you're a pedestrian, uh, uncontrolled crosswalk is where the, the vehicle you're about to encounter does not have a, a stop sign. Uh, 
Um, so we, we evaluate all, all of those, and we did note some that do not have uh, enhancements that, that could use them. So there's policy that indicates those. And we also looked at the school crosswalks and noted a few school crosswalks, not the one you're looking at, and that one's very well marked. You got the, the center median sign and your and your school crossing sign. <coughs> um, but there are some that, that could use some additional enhancements like that, and they're included in the policy. In terms of traffic safety, uh, we looked at, uh, the, as I said, the uh, accident history, and there was, um, uh, although just two in 10 years, but they were the only pedestrian accidents. Um, I think there maybe was total three in town and two were near the veterans home. So uh, we suggested a policy just to review the pedestrian route between the veterans home and downtown to see if there's any additional enhancements to serve that uh, pedestrian route. Uh, in terms of parking, uh, the Old Town parking area, those surveys that I talked about, we, we measured uh, an occupant, a peak occupancy of about 43% of the spaces in Old Town were occupied during the peak. Uh, so our opinion was that there didn't appear to be a significant parking impact in Old Town and uh, suggested, we recommended it against any parking restrictions. Um, is any parking restrictions is going to push that parking demand to other neighborhoods and areas and um, begin to have a domino effect in terms of parking impacts. Um, <clears throat> we did suggest a policy for evaluating a parking demand for all new commercial development to ensure that uh, there's adequate uh, parking uh, as those come on board. Uh, there are areas that the town has identified for additional parking spaces. Um, uh, one that uh, uh, kind of using angled spaces around Yanfil uh, Park, uh, around the Veterans Memorial Park. Um, there's a plan to evaluate diagonal parking on Humboldt Street and some additional parking on Oak Circle. And we've, we've looked at all those proposals and I, I think they're good ones to expand on street parking and suggested that they be implemented. So that's, that's the highlights of our evaluation, and I'll entertain your questions. Thank you very much. Commissioner Cook, shall we start with you? I can start over here if you'd like. I, I just always met. Thank, you. You, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Commissioner Laz, any questions? I don't question? have any questions. Commissioner Scoggins, any oh, questions? Thanks for the report. Yeah. Can you, um, can you, uh, I've got a couple. Okay. Um, when you say improve the intersection at Yont and Humboldt, isn't that directly in front of the school? Um, okay, I'm sorry. Well, it's the, it's the last picture you showed. So my question right. just is, it, it seems we narrow down the opportunities then. If it's in front of the school, we don't want to remove the stop signs, do we? No, and, and actually we didn't make a recommendation to remove them yeah, no. or leave them. Right. We just, because it's, uh, we, we just suggested it be a, um, a value to go through a thorough evaluation um, and, and result in a sort of a standard control. Did you do the last evaluation for in the 90s for, our, for this circulation? I did. Can you, and this might be. Oh, I'm sorry. No, not in the 90s. Uh, we did an update, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what year that. It, it wasn't an adopted circulation yeah. plan, what okay. he came and did before, but he did an analysis for us five years ago or so. I think it was more like seven or eight years ago. but yeah. kind of So like. I don't know if this is better directed to staff or you. Why is Heather at um, Heritage Court not <laughs> a through street? Why, <laughs> why, is it, why is it set up the way it was? And I, um, <clears throat> when those neighborhoods were developed, um, that's what the neighborhoods said they wanted. That's simply so. Right now, it just has that small little bit of pedestrian access that almost serves like a pocket park. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just I apologize because um, I don't understand. But um, so therefore, is that part of the? general plan then that it was allowed that way as a subdivision to do that okay when it was originally okay uh, passed yes okay good thank you um and i want to be absolutely clear on this parking's not an issue in yonville from our assessment good it is not i just wanted it to be on the record thank okay you. <laughs> 
Any other questions from the commissioners? Thank you so much. I, I greatly appreciate your information. It's nice when these things happen because we all have conversations on the street, and it's nice to see uh, detailed reports like this. So thank you very much. So with that being said, um, we'd like to open it up to um, public comment. And um, please remember when you come up, uh, introduce yourself and where you live, and we'd love to hear your uh, feedback on anything that was presented. My name is Mary Camerota. I live over in Washington Park. My address is 26 Landy Way. And I've been a resident of Yauntville for more than 40 years. Most of my life, actually. Could I ask you? In this town. Just please speak in the microphone as much oh, as I was you could. trying not to. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> loud. Um, I just want to say thank you, and I'm glad that we were able to hear about the findings. Um, of course, I would agree with some of the comments, but having lived here my, almost my entire life, I have some concerns of just about safety in general. And the only issue that I really see with regards to safety is that some of the, the sidewalks in the oldest parts of town are either, as he pointed out, non-existent or as I presented, I presented some findings at one of the town council meetings and I offered over a hundred photographs and documented addresses and um, m many of the photographs showed where the deficient areas were. But um, a lot of them were over off of Mulberry Street and over behind Red on Oak Circle. And the only input that I have on this is I think we should address the older areas first before we start spending our tax dollars on the new areas of town where I live. And um, and then my other thing that I wanted to say today was where you guys are allowing the old town to be grandfathered in, I almost feel like if you're going to be making rules about what you're going to be doing with the circulation and the walkways, and it ought to be universal and unilateral. We shouldn't um, cherry pick the, the issue. So, and I think it ought to be even the private areas, like the one in front of where the French Laundry Garden is, that to me is also an unsafe area because of the unevenness of the sidewalk. So I don't know. I mean, I'd, I would really rather we spend our money someplace else than in our neighborhood, at least if we were going to prioritize it. And I guess I would challenge you guys to also go out and do your own individual assessments, maybe do a walk with this gentleman and his company and actually get a good look for yourselves of where really the issues are so you guys can make your own determinations. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for speaking. Hi, Mike Sigorsic. I'm on uh, 1953 Yonville Cross. My first um, meeting in the chambers here. It's great. Um, also, um, congratulations on a, a great plan. Um, I was able to look at it beforehand. Very thorough, thoughtful, and um, so I appreciate all the detail that went into it. Just really a comment, um, because we're on Yonville Cross Road, um, definitely support the finding about the speeding. It's something that we can see um, on a daily basis. I think part of the reason is that um, Yountville unfortunately sits at the intersection of a major crossroad um, between 29 and Silverado. So most people using this section through Madison onto Yount and then through are just basically blasting through town. So in there, we can actually see it usually during uh, rush hour. People are just in a hurry. Right? So it's not really about going in and out of Yonville, it's about cutting through. So definitely uh, ways in which to, I think, curb that and, and make it more apparent that the section that they're driving through still is within town. They're not on the cross street, crossroad yet. Um, so definitely supporting a, a narrowing. I think um, using uh, speed bumps or limiters would just create people, you know, people would just drive quickly over them and they would create probably a lot more noise 
uh, as opposed to slowing it down. I think the visual impact when you drive across is that, all right, I'm free and clear. It's time to go, and they race across it. So um, just some food for thought as you guys plan through. I realize no decisions are being made here specifically, but I wanted to point that out. The other thing is um, I think this isn't really a Yountville issue, but I noticed that um, Yountville Crossroad is, seems to be one of the only crossroads that actually has a wide uh, span over Napa River, whereas um, some of the other ones, uh, uh, Oak Knoll or Oakville, they have a pretty narrow bridge. So trucks, the only way trucks can really cross between 29 and Silverado is on Yaltville Cross Road. So as I, you walk through it, you walk down Madison, sometimes it, it can be a convoy, literally 18 wheelers just plowing through. And they have to use that because all the other bridges are really narrow. So you get the, the speed of folks who are, uh, who are just getting through town. It's got nothing to do with Yaltville. They just need to cross there. And then secondarily, the trucks, because the, they literally can't cross anywhere else. I think it just... I, I see pedestrians walking through and being crowded by some pretty big rig heavy trucks making their way through. So it's just something to consider. Um, it might be a countywide thing, but I, I just wanted to point that out because we, we see it quite a bit. Does that make sense? Good? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Would anybody else from the audience like to come up and speak on this matter? Very good. If not, we'll close this to public comment then. And then we shall... Now to time discuss um, what recommendations, if any, you would like staff to um, incorporate in the next draft before it is brought to council for another workshop. We'll definitely um, be putting together both the comments from the people that got up to speak. Yes. We also received an email from a gentleman with some uh, questions about whether we're putting in an overpass at uh, at Madison. So um, all of those things will go into the public record uh, to go on to the council, but this would also be the time for the board to give any recommendations to the council as well. Very good. Nathan, would you have the ability to go back to pictures if we do? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Where do you want to? Just okay. let me know which okay. one. Okay. Commissioner Cook, you know where I'm headed. Oh, because <laughs> I always have comments. Um, yes, I think it was a very excellent report and very thorough, and I think it points out a lot of the little issues that we have. Um, just to make a comment about Yonk Crossroad, and I agree, there's a lot of speed out there, and I was thinking that speed bumps would be preferable, but then when you mention all the trucks going through there, that is going to increase noise. So I think we need to make sure we take that into consideration as to what we do on Yacht Crossroad. Um, there was some talk about raised crosswalks or additional signage or flashing lights and things like that. I think the town has plenty of signage. <laughs> I don't think we need flashing lights. <laughs> but I do think maybe in some instances raised sidewalks, uh, raised crosswalks would be a good, a good suggestion. And then just sort of a general comment that goes with um, what Mary said was the town is, is a mix of so many different neighborhoods with so many different treatments and styles of sidewalks and walkways and driveways and cuts and everything. Um, I think the attention should be put towards making um, the area of our town where the visitors are the safest making the sidewalks all improved in the visitors, the main streets in town, where people don't know necessarily what to expect in their neighborhood and leaving more of the neighborhoods the way they are because the people that live there know how to manage their neighborhood and are used to what, now I'm going from this neighborhood that has sidewalks to that neighborhood that doesn't have sidewalks and avoid making lots of drastic changes to the neighborhoods. I think that's all for right now. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Laz, your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, Commissioner uh, Scoggins, your thoughts? Lots of thoughts. Um, yeah, again, thank you for your presentation. I think most of these recommendations and you know it kind of feels like 
you went over a lot of very specific areas of town that have specific recommendations for those areas. Um, I'm not sure if we're planning on going through each one of those here tonight, or this is just a general blessing of the uh, the plan. But um, I think most of these are great explanation or great recommendations for the areas that have been have been identified. My notes basically say yes, sure, that's a good idea. You know, throughout the throughout the entire uh, litany of of ideas here. Um, trying to think if there's anything in, in particular that I'm dissenting on um, you know I think one of the ideas regarding the crossroads was maybe moving the uh, moving the that flashing uh, radar or whatever it is uh, that we're calling that um, maybe more east so that people slow down sooner that kind of seems like it's a uh, an easy fix without spending a lot of money um, I think that the uh, just looking at a few notes here that might be helpful but I mean at the end of the day I think this is a I think most of these are great ideas and, and I think could could be um, economically achieved and and provide more safety and um, yeah I don't know how to deal with the the old town in terms of you know the idea of putting in a crosswalk or a um, sidewalk given some of the the general plan for the the old town um, that seems like you know I I kind of agree that we shouldn't be treating neighborhoods and or neighbors in some ways different but there's also some um, character and charm that we're trying to preserve in this town and in history that we're trying to preserve so there there's a balance there um, so that's kind of my thoughts for for now thank you the comments were come back to Commissioner Lass yeah no I think it was a very detailed plan the only and I what you were saying about the raised crosswalks potentially could be something that would be beneficial um, the only thing I was thinking was with the traffic um, the four-day traffic report and I'm sure it was as you saw or as you said it um, with the average speeds in the 85th percentile for the Washington Street side going into Madison I actually often feel that people are just plowing through it the way you talk about sometimes the crossroad um so i don't know if there was i don't know if that was in this but um the crosswalk that um is washington madison and then the next one is actually i think where um the next crosswalk is what like bouchon i guess it might behoove us to maybe consider something between there and there because people oftentimes are crossing over um, because of the lack of the sidewalk, I guess, on the other side of Washington Street by Yont Street, Yont, Washington. You know where that, mm -hmm. go over the bridge spot is. That'd be the only thing. So, <laughs> just to clarify, <coughs> just to clarify, crosswalk in between Madison and the... I see people just walking Shining across, area. like, it's like Hail Mary walking across okay. as people are just plowing down. So, okay. I do think that either... We have to either make it very clear not to speed in some way, or we have to, I mean, I'm not sure what the solution would be to that. Something to either slow people down, because people are crossing the street, um, and there is no crosswalk, or, I don't know, signage. <clears throat> I do agree with Commissioner Cook. We have become Yonville town of signs and um, that will be our, that will be our new tagline um, but I, I think there's other options to adding yet more stop signs and more signage in this town as much as I love those yellow things that are replaced every three months um, also um, in in reference to what Commissioner Laz was talking about we we made an opening to the Yontville mile so we're encouraging people to walk out there straight right across the street from where um, from where Vandeleur Park is across the street, and there's no uh, there's no there's n nothing to indicate anybody's crossing. Um, I, 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 I find the for those of you who re re read this, I think it's great. Um, the parking 
I mean, he went into depth about the parking, and it's interesting to read that. And I think this is a solid point to uh, go back to the businesses and enforce that the businesses have a lot of bear a lot of responsibility on parking, and the fact that sometimes if someone parks in front of your house, it's they're allowed to. Um, also, j just about the point about uh, that Mary brought up about cherry picking the neighborhoods, um, I do agree that we need to make sure that all are safe. But um, we do have our specific zoning districts and our specific, um, re just our specific zoning districts and our policies set for those dis different districts in town. So they're the, they're allowed to be treated a little differently given the way that we've laid it out. Um, and that's it. I, I, I do think delivery trucks are going to become a, a bigger issue, and um, they continue to be an issue, on, especially in North Washington. Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. I greatly appreciate this report. I think it's great. Can I make one more comment? I wish you would. <laughs> of course you did. Um, just to be very specific, um, there's some talk about off screening the off-street parking from public view. Page 31. Um, 41 mostly you're talking about commercial area and I know when projects have come before us we talk like the Stuart Sellers project about putting parking in the back hiding it behind the building where it can't be seen and stuff and I know the parking report says that we don't have a parking problem but those of us know that a lot of the parking in our neighborhoods is employees of these businesses um, is there some way instead of having the lots behind the restaurants or the shops where nobody can find them and visitors don't know they're there, instead of putting up a sign that says parking, could we have employees parking behind there? I mean, I don't think the visitors ever find those lots, like behind Summerstone, and can't we make that employee parking instead? I know that one of the things we're really trying to work on is to improve signage um, on commercial properties as they're coming in. In fact, we're talking to the whistle stop right now about co completely revamping their signage so that people know that parking lot is back there. Um, and when we're an analyzing changes, we account for employee parking to be included on site. So it should be that the employee parking should be on site. And I know that a lot of businesses kind of instruct <laughs> their employees to go park, to park somewhere elsewhere. else so that yeah. it's available. But, um, so but at least our parking demands um, and our studies include employee parking on site. And so. I think that's what you find deeper into the neighborhoods are the employees parking. <laughs> if I could, like, I'd like to expand. Um, one of the principles we've been working on over the last several years is how to better utilize the existing real estate that we already have because that's the other thing. Um, we are in part and parcel part of the success, and some of the facilities that are very successful uh, were established with very different parking ratios. That having been said, one of the things we're wrestling with and we're putting in place, and you've seen that on some of the, the newer commercial developments, is what we call a detailed parking management plan. And that is indeed shifting some of that onus onto the property um, the retailer, the development, to put the employees on and account for it. So it's been a big focus for us on several of the more recent. We've also been focusing on doing some things like tandem parking, where generally the employees can go in and that affects it. So I think to your point, that's exactly, that's very helpful for staff to be hearing because it adds <coughs> reinforcement for us on what we need to be doing. Um, and we are continuing to reach out with a number of the businesses to let them know that our expectation is that they're going to show up. We refer to it as almost uh, internally employee parking zones. There are certain areas where it's more logical the way the character of the street, the impact on the neighborhood. Now what I will caution, and Chair Durham did say this correctly, public parking is public parking. And in some of our transitional zones, you know, it's not public parking except for the people I want. It's public parking. And that's why um, some of you may recall we did a very detailed discussion, oh, I'm probably guessing maybe five years ago now on parking restrictions because we've had a lot of folks that say, I want a parking zone. Well, parking zones come with signage and actually a lot of signage because then they have enforcement and then they have cost because 
residents then need to pay for the parking or the employees. And it's really a question when we look at the overall program, are we really there? Or do we have the occasional parking nuance and are there things that we can do in the interim before we take that step? And I think that's what we're saying is there's still some areas and we certainly know that there are three or four nodes that, especially on certain peak days, um, we also know, though, that a lot of our parking is underutilized, and that's the key, is how to get the parking that exists better utilized, whether that be by signage to get people to the parking or a parking management plan that says, let's put the employees here first, because generally, when I walk the neighborhoods, the, the neighbors are more receptive to the visitor parking in front of their house than the employees. So maybe we need to have a conversation with some of our business people and they need to listen to the community as we talk about some of those things. But those are some ongoing policy discussions the staff's working and you've actually seen on a few of the more recent planning projects a whole different emphasis on parking and not just does it meet the standard. Because we actually do have discretion about saying, hmm, we think this may need more parking based on our historical knowledge of how successful you're going to be. Thank you very much. I do want to add one other thing. I think we'd be rem rem remiss, and people think I'm crazy, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, Google will have a driverless car out on the streets by next year. Apple has pulled a patent to have their driverless car out as soon as possible. This this plan is is um, how long is this plan supposed to be for? Because I think we're at a we're at an uh, an interesting point of where I, I know it sounds crazy, but from the horseless carriage to the car back to the um, back to the driverless car, we're at that turning point where it's going to be nice where a lot of things are going to shift and change. So I don't know where that fits into this plan, but I think that's definitely part of the conversation of this plan. So thank you. We were in there. Thank you very much. So we will move on to item eight, number 15, the design review for uh, five talent lane. Thank you. And I think I've stopped coughing. Thank goodness. Oh my gosh. I was like, can I, I thought I was going to be able to go without Dayquil, but, I, but I'm not. So I, I will apologize um, and try to keep it as short as possible so I don't. Um, the item you have before you tonight is a review of a uh, single-family dwelling being constructed at number five Talent Lane, which is a private street off of Yount Cross Road. Um, the applicant is proposing to demolo demolish um, the existing 2,200 square foot single-story residence and a 450 foot garage and replace it with a new structure that's two stories. Can you put, do you mind putting that, the, the uh, elevation up? Do you think you can? Go search through and find it. It's, no, it's actually, in, it's in the fold. It's, there's a shortcut to the folder. We're trying to go digital here, so um, the picture will be up on the wall. Um, so the applicants are proposing to build a, a two-story um, um, single-family dwelling with a 102-foot covered front porch, a 787 uh, covered rear patio and a 436 foot square foot garage with a uh, bathroom. Um, correction to the staff report, it's a five bedroom, seven bathroom dwelling and the, t the ground floor bedrooms will feature two sets of queen size bunk beds uh, and the upstairs bedrooms will feature one set of queen size bunk beds, one double bed and one king size bed in the master bedroom. So when you count all of those spaces up, um, the pre presumed occupancy of the structure could be 24 people. The residence uh, is proposed to be situated 20 feet from the front property line um, on Talent Lane. And the, the uh, structure itself, the front door will face the driveway along the side, uh, the north side of the property. Um, the garage is, uh, two eight foot wide garage doors with a window above to provide light to an unconditioned attic space. I think you can see um, on the overheads, um, once you go back to the other one, the, the, uh, the bottom um, sketch is the north side of the property. So that 
in the center is the front door and the garage is on the far right side of that picture. The um, dwelling is featuring a gable roof with an 8 to 12 pitch and a 3 to 12 shed roof proposed for the first floor on the north side elevation. The primary dwelling would reach a, a total height of 28 feet and the garage is 19 feet 9 inches. The structure is going is proposed to be stained gray with a white trim and a coronado stone for the accents. Roofing will be composite shingles with a three color mix. And um, attached to the staff report are some color boards of those um, um, proposed um, materials. Um, staff has gone through um, an analysis of the development standards for the Old Town for the Historic District and uh, compared the proposed development with the existing standards. And in the staff report is that analysis. So I just want to call to your attention um, three areas that staff has concerns of with this proposed project. And these concerns have been shared with the applicant and the uh, architect that has been employed for the project. Um, they desired uh, that the board review their proposal as proposed this evening. Um, typically, we work through some of the issues where staff feels the standards need to be, um, or the projects need to be modified for the standards, and instead they elected to come to your board this evening. Um, the first issue, and I think probably the, the biggest issue that staff has with this current proposal is um, concerning the floor to air ratio floor to area ratio. Um, we have two sets of, of site plans and surveys that show the size of the lot being two different sizes. So uh, we've asked that, uh, uh, you know, that we clarify exactly how big the lot is. Um, the drawings show that the lot is 7,840 square feet. And the survey shows it's 9,042 feet. So because 8,000 feet is the cutoff, it's kind of important for us to know exactly how large it is so that because we have different standards for those two different sizes. Um, if the lot is um, actually 9,042 feet as the survey shows, which is typically usually the, the correct one, um, the FAR uh, limit is 25%. Um, if, in fact, the, the lot is smaller than 8,000 square feet, then 30% would apply. So that's, a, you know, that's an important, I think, factor as we move forward on uh, the issues associated with the FAR. Um, as I know your board is aware, because you deal with these all the time, um, a lot of people think that the floor area ratio is just the footprint of the building, but it actually is really designed to... Um, uh, make sure that kind of the uh, the massing of a structure on a lot is taken into consideration. So it's not just the footprint, although the footprint is an important uh, part of FAR, but it also includes um, the second floor, any other structures that are on the property, because they do affect what the massing is and how it fits in with the neighborhood. Um, so based upon our... Um, analysis, um, the current FAR for the proposed project is 0.49. Um, that includes the downstairs, um, the current upstairs elevations are 18 feet. Um, we're recommending that that be lowered to 16 feet, but it does include the second floor. It also includes the patio that's covered and attached to the um, to the home, so uh, 0.49 is significantly greater than the standard, and um, so that's one area that we have raised as an issue. Um, the uh, one of the other features of the FAR discussion is that um, what is what it, what is included, if you will, into that calculation? The applicant is suggesting that attics, non-habitable floor area to the first floor, and the patio should not be counted towards the FAR. 
Um, so I'm sure they'll speak to that this evening when they get uh, when they're up here and and um, make their presentation. Um, one of the other st areas that staff has reviewed um, to bring to the board's attention is the existing is the parking. I think that the um, the plan with the garage at the rear of the property uh, and the 74 foot long driveway is certainly an improvement over what is existing out there now. Um, interestingly enough, our standards um, discuss. <coughs> single-family dwellings regardless of the size of the of the structure so um, I think our our concerns with the uh, the current configuration of the parking is just simply that it doesn't appear that the proposed area for um, uh, parking will be very useful um, the vehicle would have to navigate a long backup up on the driveway and uh, we're not sure that, the tr that there's enough room for a turning radius for them to, to be able to turn around and go back out. So um, although there's certainly a lot of stacking for, say, three tandem spots, so six spaces in the driveway, we're not sure that that is really going to be useful. And, and while, <coughs> excuse me, technically that would meet your standards, given the fact that there is a potential for such a high occupancy of the dwelling um, I think parking may be a, of a concern and I think particularly uh, since uh, if they're not easy to use there's a potential for there to be impact in the neighborhood <coughs> <coughs> I can tell I'm talking too much okay um, the uh, applicant and their their agent have suggested that <coughs> the configure <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> the configuration is set up for two sisters that own the home. <coughs> they both have large families. I'm sorry. Um, however, you know, a lot, and they're going to be using it as a second unit, which means that it won't be occupied all the time. And <coughs> I think the <coughs> I'm sorry. The board is aware that um, many many um, out of town owners that use homes as second um, residences oftentimes think that they can help to finance the purchase or the upgrade of those second units by renting them out as vacation rentals. And so staff is continuing to work with uh, owners. Um, because the town does not allow occupancy of less than 30 days in a rental. <coughs> <coughs> and that's how we... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. How do we attempt to regulate those things? So I think this certainly, the configuration of the home as presented certainly does um, uh, bring those concerns uh, to light with staff. I'm almost done. There are, uh, there are certain review, uh, design review findings that your board must make in order to approve applications. And I think there's four areas um, which are highlighted on page six of the staff report where staff feels there's would be some difficulty in, um, is it five? No. no oh, okay. Um, where uh, staff find that there may be some difficulty in making the appropriate findings to approve the application. And those are, will, it, will the project substantially, properly and adequately perform or satisfy functional requirements without being unsightly or creating substantial disharmony with its locale and surroundings? And I think our concern is the current project as proposed, um, the FAR would, um, I guess, inhibit you from being able to, to approve uh, or fi make the findings for that uh, important um, area, that it will not inf interfere or impair the development use or enjoyment of other properties in the vicinity. Um, and I think that the issues concerning parking uh, might go to that issue. That it will not directly or in a cumulative fashion impair, inhibit, 
or limit further investment or improvement in the vicinity. I think the FAR is <coughs> our concern. And that it will minimize or eliminate adverse physical or visual effects which might otherwise result from un unplanned or inappropriate development design. And I think, again, uh, the massing of the structure certainly is an issue um, for you to consider. Um, that concludes our um, verbal staff report. I'd ha be happy to answer any questions. Um, and then it would be appropriate for you to uh, see the applicant and the or, or agent would make want to make a presentation before taking public comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, staff. Um, <coughs> thank you for all those details. Shall we start with uh, Commissioner Scoggins? Any uh, questions of staff? I don't have any this juncture. And Commissioner Laz, any questions of staff thus far? No, I can't. Yeah, Commissioner uh, Scott. Sorry, I forgot about this one. Um, the, you mentioned, thank you. You mentioned the, um, I think it was 9,200 square feet or something. The the, the size uh, of the lot. Yeah. Can okay. can you tell me what, if it was, if it is what it is that you think it might be, um, how how would that affect your findings? Well. Um, Nothing changes the size of the massing because th that's a separate calculation. We're at 49% or 0.49. Uh, if it's 9,000 square feet, then the limit in our regulations would be 0.25. If the lot, in fact, is smaller than 8,000 square feet, 0.3 would be allowed. So it is an important factor, um, but it doesn't affect the calculation that we're making, if that's what you're asking. And Commissioner uh, Cook, um, any questions? Of just staff? one question. Um, my understanding is the town does not have a defined legal definition of single family residence. Um, in terms of, you mean size or number of bedrooms or anything like that? No. Okay. No, we don't. Just one question, sorry. Um, I should have asked this. Um, but um, if, if a survey says one size and a drawing says the other, which yeah. trumps? Well, one of, the, one of the requests that we're making as staff is that we verify that the survey is correct. Typically, the survey is correct. Okay. But we're asking the applicant to provide some evidence of, to substantiate one or other of the numbers and that would be impo an important factor as we move forward in the review we're anticipating we're, what we're suggesting in, in terms of recommendation tonight is that you provide your input and that you send the applicant back to staff to continue to work through these issues and problems mm -hmm. and be before you see it again so and uh just one other quick question uh they it's patio ceiling height and attic correct yes okay very good Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Very good. Um, is there someone from the uh, applicant who would like to come forward and speak to this? Hi, I'm Heather Block, and I'm the new owner of Five Talent with my husband. And just to correct you, there's one owner. It's just oh. our family. And we have a large family, and we are going to use this as a single family home. Um, just to address some of your concerns, we do not intend to rent it. Um, we, having a large family, in order to accommodate our family when we do come and stay in our home, we need to have several bedrooms, bathrooms, and we want to be comfortable doing that. Um, but I think more importantly than that, because I, I feel confident I can alleviate concerns about renting the property. First of all, I think it's illegal is my understanding, is you cannot rent a property for less than 30 days in Yonville, is my understanding. So that being said, I think that kind of takes that off the table since it's illegal, um, and that's not our intent. But I, we have had a lot of conversations with Sandra, and I know she's out on maternity leave. So I've actually never spoken with Marlene before. Um, so hi, I'm Heather Block. Um, but we did do a lot of back and forth, and. I'm feeling like 
we were given some misinformation and we didn't intend to come here to present this without support from the planning, from Sandra and the planning commission. Um, but we received a letter on Friday morning via email saying that we did not have the blessings that we thought we had. And so these concerns, um, although have been mentioned in the past to us, um, we were under the impression that we had addressed the FAR concerns and um, the parking concern, again, um, it's, it's really a non-issue. It's a two-car garage. There's a driveway that has plenty of space for a car to drive down it and park into the garage. Um, I, I think the concern is that since the house is faces the way it does, the front door, um, you know, the, the entrance is on the side. And the garage will, if it was right up against the entrance, you could not get two cars in, right? You couldn't drive two cars down the driveway and park directly. However, if you, once you pass that, you can turn your wheel and you can pull into the garage. And then the other car would just come in straight. So, you know, that's difficult for me because I, I would need to understand a little bit more what the problem with that is because I know that anyone with a California driver's license could pull in and out of that garage. And honestly, if they did hit it, it would be on our property and it'd most likely be our car. So I think it is usable and I don't think it is right to say that somehow there's gonna be a parking issue um, in addition to the parking spots we have on our driveway. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the property that exists there now. Um, I have some pictures, but it's on my phone. But it is um, unattractive, um, to say the least. And this would be a vast improvement upon what is there now. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands that because when it says you're going to demolish a single family and build a double, sometimes that sounds like, oh wow, you know, these, they're coming in, it's a second home, it's concerning, um, they're going to fill this vast, um, you know, a house that is not in taste of Yonville. And we pick this town, we love this town, our, our goal is to build, our desire is to build a very traditional farmhouse um, that is within all the limits that have been uh, put forth by the town. And the square footage is allowed. And um, we are, uh, my understanding, and even in the letter that I received on Friday, is that we're in compliance. It's just this FAR is kind of, um, it's a foggy area in that it can be interpreted several ways, but it's not written anywhere that you know, the FAR needs to be interpreted the way that the, the uh, Planning Commission is, is doing so. And to speak to that again, the, as far as lot size, it's interesting because when we purchased the house, the lot size was, I believe it was like 7,800 uh, 7, square feet around there. And initially, so we did a survey because we wanted to build, and our survey came back with the lot size larger. and. My understanding and I'm, is, and we're not talking about the massing issue, we're just talking about square footage. The difference between having a larger lot and a smaller lot is about 300 plus square feet, but not, I don't think it's over four. Um, so if you have a larger lot, actually the house needs to be smaller. And if we have a smaller lot, we can make the house a little bit bigger. Um, so when we spoke with Sandra, we were told to go with the 78. So we planned our house around the 78. On Friday, we got a letter saying that now they're still trying to establish what size the lot is. And I don't know what we can do to help establish that other than what we have done. And then I think it's up to, to the Planning Commission and, and you to decide what size the lot is. Um, because we have two different numbers and um, we're happy to work with either, but there's a lot of money and time that goes into this. So if we're given one number and we work on that, and then it changes, you can understand that there's a lot of um, commitment, time, and money that will go into changing that. But again, it's, it's less than 400 square feet um, of a difference. And as far as the um, massing, um, I think the concern is that the main part of the house 
has um, a higher, a high, it's like an open space, high ceiling with exposed beams. And then the front part of the house, well, towards the street, is a two-story house. And I guess the issue is that they want to include square footage because the ceiling heights and the roof is um, the 28 um, high. And so we spoke with Sandra and we dropped the um, ceiling heights down in order to accommodate that and make sure that we were in the FAR, within the FAR, the allowable FAR. And my understanding was that we were. Um, but again, like I said, we, we did get this letter and saying that now they're wanting to count um, all the air, the air space, air, you know, ceiling space that you can't walk in, but it's, it exists in your home as part of the square footage. So when you say like 41% or something, you're including that airspace. So it's not actual square footage. The um, footprint of the home is smaller than the existing home. Um, it's also set back. Um, the existing home right now is right on the property line. Um, we have pushed this home back so it's better situated. So it'll be much more pleasing right now when you drive down Talent, you literally drive into the house like it's the first thing you see we're going to push that back which then our driveway does get a little longer but i i don't see that as a negative in that it gives us more off-street parking um although i don't anticipating needing it because when we come up we drive together um and we are a single family um so that's what i would want to tell you um just so you know that there was a process that we didn't just come up here and say, oh, we're not going to listen to you. We're going to go directly to the board because we do respect um, the planning commission. We, we did. We thought we were working with them, um, but there's been, I know Sandra has gone on maternity leave, and there's been a little bit of a miscommunication about exactly mm -hmm. what number we need to work with and, and those kind of things. So we thought we were in um, within the FAR. So having said that, um, I'm going to let our architect, Pete, talk to you. Um, mainly about the structure and things like that that um or if you have any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them thank you very much commissioner uh, cook any uh, questions of the applicant Not this, at far? this time no commissioner scoggins Not at this time thanks commissioner yeah. Lance? thank you very much we thank appreciate you. your information so did the architect thank you Hi, I'm Peter Rose. I'm the architect, and I'm just here to answer some questions. I've got qu well, we'll start with you. No, 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 no. No, please. It's my right to defer to you. No. There's so many, I don't know where to start. <laughs> All right, then I, I, I want to start right off the bat with, um, and I didn't ask the applicant of this because you're the ones who did, you're the one who did the drawings. Mm -hmm. um, misinformation and miscommunication. It, it, do you agree with that statement? Yes. So I know Sandra is out, but I'm, is not all this information available online? In ter I mean, this FAR information is pretty straightforward. Uh, the parking, I'll give you um, questions, and questions about the vacation rental, I completely understand. But when it comes to the FAR, I mean, it's in, it's, it's in our code. It's very clear. It's very direct. So in terms of miscommunication and misinformation, I'm confused in terms of asking for an exemption for the patio when, in fact, it's attached and those types of things. So if you could speak to that, that'd be great. Well, uh, Sandra originally told us that it was 7,840 square feet. I had a survey done. It was over 9,000. And she said, well, the, the city says that it's 7,800, and that's what, that's what we're going to go by. So the house was designed with that square footage. Okay. And we just found out on Friday that, that you know, they listed the 9,000, so. Okay, so, if, so with that being said, if, if I read this correctly, whether it's 9,000 or 700, 7,000 7, and some odd feet, it's still exceeding the FAR, is it not? As far as the square footage, no. Uh, the patio, the uh, the attic space, um, the extra second floor. She told us that floor. the patio, we were allowed to have a thousand square feet. But but uh, in addition, but, in addition to the square footage of the house, the patio. Correct. She told you that. Correct. So right here, it states that a patio is exempt if it is. 
if exempt it is up not, to a thousand square feet. Right. Habitable. Must be non habitable, but occupiable structural element attached to the attached to the um, unit. Can you where is that in here? About the patio? Number eleven. Page four. Thank you, page four. Excuse me, give me a second. In bold. Sure. Thank you. The sheet that she gave me had it listed as that you're allowed a thousand square feet of covered. But I, it, I can't remember exactly sure, the wording. But sure, I, I have it right here. So to qualify for the covered patio exemption, so for the fact that the thousand feet wouldn't be included, the porch must be a non-habitable but occupiable structural element attached to a building, meaning that it is attached to the building rather than being an extension of the main room li roof line. Right. So that's, are that's you, the, with the plans? So with the current plans, is is this the case or not the case? Well. Uh, it, it isn't, I don't know how to answer that, but uh, when, when I was originally designing the house, which by the way, the staff report is very inaccurate as far as my communication with Sandra. I went back and forth with her probably 10 different times I sent her drawings. And she said that the only thing that, that we needed to do was open up that patio on three sides, which I did. At that time, she said nothing about the roof line. Okay. Commissioner Cook? I feel like that, that, that the information she gave us and the way we designed the house was based on that, and what's, what's written in the staff report is totally contradictory. Okay. Okay. I have to just say that we haven't spoken to the applicant since Friday. They didn't call our office to let us know there were any issues. But I, obviously, I think there are some, some things that need to be worked out before the, the board sees us again. And certainly, we can. We didn't have to have this hearing if there were some issues that needed to be raised. So it's up to you. But I would suggest that you know, still after you hear from everyone, that we go back and work some of these issues out at the staff yeah. level. Thank you. Thank you. And I might want to add that we didn't communicate with with either one of these staff members. Only. Sandra. Yeah, she just, you both reiterating the same thing. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Cook. Um, I think your point, uh, Mr. Durham, is that, you know, the facts are the facts, and that's what we have to stick with. Um, I guess the only question that comes up when I look at the floor plan is there's all these massing of people in the house and no closets. Can you explain that? Or one or two tiny closets. They decided that they didn't need the closet space because the house is going to be a weekend retreat, and they have many kids. Okay. That's really true. They're not living in the house full time, and they have a right to design it that way if they want. Sure. <coughs> it just it raises a lot of questions for future use. Okay. Thank well, you. if the question is, they're going to rent it. The answer is no. <coughs> no, but. It could be bought by somebody else at a future time, too. And what is it set up for? Raise those questions. Commissioner Scoggins, any questions? Oh, is there any alternative to the, um, to the, the porch scenario um, in your mind as the architect, given the, the parking situation and the porch scenario that Commissioner Durham was referring to? Thank you. I was looking at that. Yeah. Okay. Then strike the uh, the latter, but the, the former regarding the parking. Are there any alternatives to the parking? Is there anything that we can that you can do about the, the parking the porch that the uh, the staff was concerned about in terms of I think the concern from their standpoint is it's not really integrating point. it in the roof line. So if, yeah. the, if there could be a different architectural treatment that would bring it down, that would certainly help with the massing. And I think that's of our, our, our concern. And that's the reason that the, that the ordinance covers those things is, is because when you have a lower porch, it helps to reduce the feel of the massing. So, yes, if there was a way that that could be addressed. And again, I addressed point. it with Sandra because she said that the, if the ceiling level in the family room was 16 feet, 
which I lowered it down to, then that would satisfy that. And again, she said nothing about the roof line. And I explained to her that we wanted to keep the roof line consistent all the way back. So that's why I show on the section up there on the top that, that is, that's all trust area up there. I just don't think our drawings reflect that. Maybe there was a discussion, but I'm not sure that the that we ever saw a revised drawing. That's the drawing right less, there. Is that revised? Yeah, it's hard. It's, hard. it's, no. it's oh. impossible to read on this. On this. Well, prior to this drawing, I had the I had I had the ceiling going all the way up to the 28 feet. So I worked it out with Sandra to bring that ceiling down so that she would not have to include that in the FAR. That's just only the living, oh, over the living room. Over the living room. But not correct. talking about the port, the covered Potty. porch. It's the same the roof line all the way out. But the elevation still shows it continuous all the way across. Right, because the ridge line is consistent. What we did was we brought the ceiling down okay. and created that But the attic exterior area. view is still the same as same. drawn. Correct. Okay. And Sandra accepted that. I worked this out with her over many different conversations. Commissioner Lass? I mean, I have all the emails. <laughs> Do you have them? I don't have them with me, but I can surely. Well, we can work those things through. But I, I think I, you I, need I, to work some stuff yes, through. Yes, I think, I think definitely. This I mean, back here this, this staff report was written by Sandra, and I just made some so minor I, changes. So very good. I yeah. If, if, and the other thing is I want to say is that Sandra didn't communicate to me. If I might for a second, we know. I understand where you stand on that. Okay. I, 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 do you have any questions? No, I see the issue that we're talking about, you basically, you didn't change the height, you changed the height within, but that doesn't affect the outside far space. And your patio is in disagreement. So I think mm -hmm. the reality is there needs to be more discussion before this comes back to us. And it has to be pretty clearly defined what the actual square footage is, right? Mm -hmm. 942, 7840, that's a pretty big gap. Mm -hmm. So whether it be another surveyor looking at it, an impartial, whatever it's going to be, um, it's hard to come up with these numbers when you don't really have a clearly defined space. We also understand that there's an easement on the property as well. And I was never able to get an answer as far as whether that's included or not. Yes, these are all. Any other these questions? Are all valid points. Yep. Any other questions of the architect? Very good. I greatly appreciate your time. We um, we're gonna we'll leave it as an opportunity to come back to you. But at the moment, we thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, sure, please. Just yeah, if you come up to the podium, please. Hi, Heather Block again. I just wanted to ask, why is it in violation of FAR? Because we the letter says we're in compliance with everything. So I'm just wondering why um, we're in violation of the FAR. I it's in the staff it's report. It's in the staff report. Actually, All the of staff the details. report says we're, we're in compliance. No. 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 Let, let me, please. All right. We're, Thanks. The staff report that's on the wall there mm -hmm. gives outlines every single reason why there's an issue here. And this is why I'm a little frustrated, because there's a lot of miscommunication, and there's a lot of misunderstanding that is confusing to me. Right. It's very confusing to me as right. well. Right. But... But I have this in front of me. Mm -hmm. I have the town ordinances online. I, I, I don't understand all this confusion. So there, it's all right here. Right. The confusion isn't so much that it's the, the town ordinance. It's that it's what's included in FAR. And that is, that's up for interpretation. And that's where I need your help. It's, it's very much laid out. But the exemptions and such... It, and that's, it said if you drop, in other words, if you drop the ceiling height, it's not right. part of the FDR. So that's exactly why you're here in front of us tonight. Right. So yeah. you, you guys have gotten an opportunity. We're going to listen to the neighbors, and then the four of us are going to tell the staff exactly how you should proceed. Okay. Okay. Thank with, you. With clear direction. Okay. okay. Thank you. Well, with that being said, we're going to open it up to the rest of the comments and...
when you come up, please let us know who you are and where you are, and keeping in mind what has been that said thus far, I'd, we'd like your feedback and your input. So if the first person would like to come up. Good evening. My name is uh, Jim Romeri. And Bailey, and we live at Three Talent Lane. We are so excited about getting an aesthetically gorgeous resident next to us. Excuse me one second. Make sure you both share. Oh, no, he's got it. Okay. Got Thank you. Feet. You're That's fine. Thank you. Also. Because the house that exists at Five Talent is an eyesore. The problems that we have are, number one, Talent Lane is a private road. It's delicate as best. The residents have to maintain it. It is not maintained by the city. How many construction trucks are coming down this fragile road to raise a house and then rebuild a new one? That's number one. There is no place to, to have construction, or construction uh, trucks on Talent Lane. We don't have sidewalks. We don't have any available parking. That's the second one. Third, the fact that 24 people are going to be sleeping there, that is another concern. And the driveway faces our backyard. The front door does. Excuse me. Uh, I think my biggest concern is and when we were really prepared to speak this evening, so we didn't make any notes, or I'd like to see a pair, of, a set of the plans. I, I looked it up online, and when you when you blow it up online to see the setbacks and where everything is, it gets fuzzy. Uh, there is a, a easement there between my property and and their property, and it's it's a ditch. And you put the ditch in several years ago. It's for water. We did have a water issue several years ago there for a long time. Uh, I'm going to guess it's five or six feet wide. This may be the difference between the 7,800 square feet and the 9,000 square feet. I don't know. Maybe we're trying to play both sides of the deal here, saying we're going to build it. We're a lot smaller, so we can build it bigger, but it actually are lots bigger, so we're doing you a favor. <coughs> I, I don't want to go there right now. My concern is I don't want anybody filling in that ditch. And it just sounds like it's going to be an end. If they want to build it and say they're from a big family, and then a year from now, we really didn't like living there, we're stuck with an end. And that's my concern. So with that, we're going to, like I say, we really weren't prepared tonight to talk. So pardon us for not being really prepared. But, You're fine. It's, okay. it's open discussion. So thank you very much for okay, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak to the matter? Jim Cole, uh, six and two talent. Um, when we first saw the plans, the uh, bedroom arrangement and the capacity that it lent to uh, was an eye opener. Um, it sounds from Mrs. Bach that it's, they're not going to have that many people, but um, the neighborhood is a single family residence, permanent residence that live there all the time. Um, 24 people, the cars, the bikes, the uh, extracurricular equipment that families have um, can be a big impact. And as my other neighbors just said, Talent Lane is pretty small and pretty rural, <coughs> and uh, there's not a lot of additional room for tr transient in and out or all the extra stuff. So keep that. I don't know how to control that. I guess the far is the way. Keep that in mind. Uh, my other comment is more of a request for an addition to the permit, <coughs> and that is um, drainage. Um, as my other neighbor talked about, the, um, there is a um, drainage ditch. It's the Mesa Court Drainage Project, uh, where the town, uh, or, when Mesa Court was put in, there was no provisions for drainage, and it just rolled down the end of the court and into this natural swale, 
right by their new house between the two, there are two houses. <coughs> and um, then across my field and across my front lawn and down to the next house and then out into uh, Stag's View. Um, when the district was uh, organized uh, and money collected, I guess the town actually fronted uh, quite a bit of the money. Um, that took care of all the up, upper water, Mace Court and Yont Street. And so it did a good job. It was a good improvement. Um, but there is still this natural swale uh, downhill through both of my properties. And as houses are renovated, uh, landscaping is redone, uh, drainage systems are put in, the water is redirected, uh, con concentrated, and is ending up on the street through my properties. Um, I've put um, uh, raised planters in to act as dams. I've hand dug ditches. I've put in uh, drain pipe um, to control it. Uh, yeah. But that's the best I'm doing. And as <coughs> each house is um, bought, changed, modified, I'm afraid of additional water that's being thrown at it. Um, so I'm requesting that the permit require a drain plan where the water is put into this Mesa Court drainage system somehow so it's not free flowing through the neighborhood. I guess that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else like to speak to Five Talent? If not, we're going to close the public comment and it will come back to the uh, commissioners here. Oh, boy. Uh, excuse me one second. Sorry, Commissioner Cook. Um, I want to remind everyone that we are here to, that this commission is here to give guidance on and provide feedback to the applicant on how, how we determine it would be best for them to move forward. Okay. Okay. Um, I appreciate your comments, and especially from the neighbors that have been there for a while to address things like drainage that not everybody is aware of. So I think that's important for staff to consider. And um, I think almost all of the concerns that I have can be addressed by um, the project meeting the FAR requirements because that's why they're there. That's it. Commissioner Lass? Okay. You okay? <laughs> Commissioner Scoggins? <laughs> I'm trying to mix it up. Thank you for your comments, uh, both from the applicant and new resident of Yauntville sounds like and uh, the neighbors um, the question about the ditch might have to for me get cleared up with with staff or, or somebody that's got this uh, in their mind's eye um, is that a, is that a, is this a time to talk about the ditch with staff or no I agree uh, I I think it's been noted and it's something that needs to be discussed the staffs to make that decision and, Definitely. and just so you understand when when we review building permits we're, we are looking at making sure that drainage is accommodated that's a typical thing that's done um, it's we appreciate knowing that there's a particular problem in this area so we'll pay extra attention to it but that is something that that is dealt with in the normal plan check process okay great um, regarding the comments around construction and the in the use of the of the road um, I don't know how to deal with that, frankly, other than it sounds like it is what it is and, and uh, maybe there's something that staff or the town can, can do to help ease some of the neighbors' concerns around where these trucks are parking, staging, queuing, whatnot, but um, that might be something that staff looks into to help the neighbors out. If Certainly you, we can't have a, a dump truck blocking the road for both safety and, and just it's their right to travel freely um, and then in terms of the applicant um, I agree with uh, 
the previous comments around the FAR, and, and I think that there's a lot of unknowns or some questions and confusion that needs to be uh, sorted out, and, and uh, I think we, it's hard to make any sort of uh, determination before um, that all gets ironed out, and we have the actual, you know, everyone's agreeing what the numbers are. Um, so I'm not going to comment any more about the, uh, the plans until I think we have that that information sorted out. Thank you. Commissioner Les, your thoughts? I think I've said everything I thought. Very good. <clears throat> so my, my main concern is that um, all the he said, she said, misinformation, miscommunication, um, and all that confusion. Um, I find it interesting that if you got a letter on Friday and Sandra's not here anymore, that nobody bothered to check in with the new people in the planning department. That's disconcerting as well. Um, and it, there are questions about FAR, and there are questions about what's right and what's considered a patio and what's not. Even a lot of it's just in the staff report tonight, let alone what's online. So th that's where my frustration and confusion lies. Um, in terms of giving guidance to the applicant, I would say the first thing to do tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. is to sit down with this staff and make sure. I, I, I've been doing this for a little while, and I'm not a, I'm not a contractor, but I've worked with, uh, with Sandra long enough to... Uh, no, she's a very thorough uh, person, and I respect her highly for the job she does. Um, but at the same time, I respect the two that are sitting in front of me as well, and that if the time is taken to go over just this staff report and your concerns, it seems to me that it would be able to be worked out rather quickly too, and you guys can move forward with your project. Um, I, I do know there are concerns uh, with the construction, and we do have certain construction um, parameters. Um, in this town that everybody, all construction people need to meet. Um, but with that being said, I think the most important guidance here is for the applicant to meet with the uh, current planners as soon as possible to get all this confusion and miscommunication cleared up. So that is my direction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with that being said, we will move on to item number nine, presentation and discussions, which there are no items. That, that was easy. So we'll move on to number, we'll move on to number 10, staff and board reports. Um, <clears throat> there's not too much to report other than the <clears throat> introduction that was already given. Uh, we still have our uh, regularly scheduled meeting next month. We already have at least one. Um, design review application that will be coming your way and then potential for others. We shall see with that. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Any comments from the commissioners? Any concerns? No. Great. With that, I'm, we will adjourn this meeting to uh, the March 10th meeting. Thank you very much. Wasn't that well done, Nathan. Okay, so Nicely done, my boy. Thank you.